All right, everyone, welcome to my very first intro to Lunch Hour Legal Marketing with Conrad Som and Keith Sakalakis. We are recording this right after July 4th. There's a lot going on in the news, and we're going to get right to it because as we promised from the beginning, Guy, this is going to be a highly tactical event every single time we record. Yes, Conrad, today is the day that you encourage everybody to go out and buy a gun. We, you keep going where we're going to drop subscribers at the very beginning. We have to drop subscribers like they have to get at least, you know, five minutes in before we scare them away. And with that, roll the music. Let's dive in to this episode of Lunch Hour Legal Marketing. Money makes a world go round. Welcome to Lunch Hour Legal Marketing, teaching you how to promote, market, and make fat stacks for your legal practice. Here on Legal Talk Network. Welcome to this episode of Lunch Hour Legal Marketing. Before we dive into today's exciting topics, let's have a word from our sponsor. We would like to thank Alert Communications for sponsoring this episode. If any law firm is looking for call, intake, or retainer services available 24-7-365, 24-7-365, just call 866-827-5568. So Conrad, back to all of these topics that are going on. Where do you want to start? I think we start, and I, and I don't want to focus specifically on this being a really bad idea. I want to focus on Google's response to this and how things have run through the way Google's thinking about this specific incident and reviews. But we're going to talk about Mark and Patricia McCloskey. And I don't want to drag them through the mud again because it's been done very well on uh, online. But Guy, can you just give a quick background of who these two are? I actually uh, didn't know their names until you had mentioned them. But they are the they're, uh, plaintiff's lawyers. Where Correct. are they located? St. Louis. St. Louis plaintiff lawyers who were defending their home. Defending their home from protesters. And unfortunately, the optics on this, unfortunately for them, the optics on this look extremely bad. The AR-15, I'm not a gun guy, so maybe it's not an AR-15. Let's call it scary gun and little tiny silver gun. And and two things happen out of this. I mean, all of the gun people that I know made fun of the way they were actually criticized, the way they were handling their weapons. And two, they were kind of threatening people. They also went so far as to they were the ones who filed the police report, right? Uh, the initial police report on this. And so what has happened here has been a pretty, pretty severe backlash online. I think this brings up a whole bunch of questions. But what I want to key in here, because none of this should be news to anyone if, unless you've been living under a rock. If you're at least listening to this podcast, you know what we're talking about. The interesting thing for me, Guy, is when we've seen some of this behavior in the past, we've seen a lot of kind of, I don't want to use the word online vigilanteism, but there has been a lot of... Uh, Twitter mob. Twitter mob, I will call it review mob. Like review there have mob. been a GMB lot mob? of G, the GMB mob, right? And there have been a lot of companies who have seen their reviews, their online profiles just absolutely destroyed. And that's not been the case with McCloskey's. I've been watching this uh, in terms of how Google's responded to this. If you look up the McCloskey Law Center in St. Louis, Missouri right now, there are but two Google reviews. Are you stoking the GMB mob right now as we speak? I don't want to say, because here's the thing. This is this very difficult question for companies like Google. How do you go about thinking about, is it okay to write a review of a business, of a law firm, that you know nothing about other than the fact that they were the two idiots standing in front of their house threatening people with guns? Right. Well, and uh, fortunately for Google, because of Section 230 protections, it's not really their problem. So Section 230 makes it not Google's problem. And yet the quality of like, if you think about whether or not that reflects whether they're good lawyers, probably not. It certainly doesn't reflect their clients. And so I've been fascinated to watch as the reviews came in and piled on and piled on and piled on, and then they disappeared. And so... Um, on the McCloskey's page? On the McCloskey's page. there are So they were getting reviews. Oh, yeah. Okay. I think we need to make that clear for the audience because it sounded like you were saying they didn't have any reviews. No, they were pilloried. 
right? Right. And then it's been it, it it's disappeared. I'm so curious. Google's filtering them. Google is filtering. How do they even do that? Well, so do you have experience, Key, with with large volumes of reviews getting them taken off of Google? Like uh, proactively trying to get them yeah. taken off, or like a one off even. But let's walk through yeah. that. Let's let's walk through the simple situation. You've got a one off review for a client. Have you had success? And and what are the steps you go through to pull that down? Yeah. So uh, are we just, are we being Google specific, or are we talking about any review platform? Let's start with Google, process. and then we'll go to the, and 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 I think your point is is clear here. The different review platforms have different policies, very widespread policies. So let's start with Google. But I want you to walk through. You have a client who gets a negative review. What can you do, and have you done in the past to have that pulled down? So uh, we got to walk through the nature of the negative review, right? Uh, so we might ask our client, hey, is this a real review here? Yeah, it is. Okay. So then that's going to take <laughs> us down. That's going to take us down one path. Right. Uh, you know, but the I answer is never yet really is. It's, yeah, like, it's I, either you know, a crazy person or, or it's opposing counsel. Right. It's uh, the spouse of my client. Right. So then the question becomes like, okay, still, all right, even in, the, in that context on Google, if you have a hunch that it's actually a real review, maybe not a client, Google is pretty, in my view of all of the different policies, pretty generous. It's just experience with the firm, right? Um, I don't know. That's not the exact language. What's the exact language from the guideline? Uh, I don't know. I'd have to pull it up. But I, I'll pull it up. You talk, I'll pull it up. Your point here is that each of these directories has explicit language about what is permitted and what is not permitted. And Yelp's language is very, very, very different from Google's, which is very, very different from, I'll speak from my personal experience with Avos. I don't have the language in front of me, but for example, Avo wants to make sure you're an actual client, right? Google has a very different perspective. If you are interacting with a law firm, right? You don't necessarily have to be a client, but you can just be interacting with a law firm. And that's that's good enough, right? So so from that perspective, you have a really, really helpful front desk person or a really, really horrible front desk person. That's enough to leave a review, right? So here's, a, I pulled it up here. You can search for uh, map users contributed content policy if you want to read the whole thing, but I'll just pull off a, uh, some pertinent parts. Uh, contributions must be based on real experiences and information. That's it. Yeah. That is, that is pretty broad. That's very broad. That's broader than Yelp even. You know, deliberately fake content, copied or stolen photos, off-topic reviews, defamatory language, personal tax, and unnecessary or incorrect content are all in violation of our policy. So, so, so that's the thing is you've got to you got to pick one of these policy violations if you're going to go the direction of trying to have Google take it down. You got to you got to name a policy violation, try to articulate it, couch it in terms of the policy violation. Right. And good and luck. Those- good luck. Well, so that's my next thing, especially with like, that's a very, very broad description, specifically for Google. Your level of success in pulling stuff down? Low. Okay. And is that by, um, I w- so I would fall into that category as well. It's very low. I have one exception, and I think my exception is very similar to the McCloskey's. Google is very aware of when a individual listing just gets bombarded and when there are political components to this that are not related to the actual practice of law or or, or whatever that small business does the one client i have where we have removed hundreds if not thousands is a heavily involved political client and they're just attacked uh from from a political perspective uh, on a regular basis. And so I, you know, Google's got them kind of sequestered off. And so they have a very small number of actual reviews, but they do have a different policy. But in general, the ability to pull stuff down specifically from Google is fairly difficult. Yeah. Uh, and the other, the other one that I think you can have some success with is if, if you can identify a pattern of fake reviews. So, you know, same profiles, leaving reviews all over different law firm websites, and it's an obvious pattern of fake. Those, I think they're getting, they're not great at it. It's really, because the, the, the issue is, is that what is Google? They're a technology company. They want to solve this with math. And so a lot of these reviews, unless you can really show a pattern, you need you need to get it in front of a human being to look at it. Right. Um, and Google doesn't, there's not built for that. Right. 
So one of the things, Guy, that I've uh, you, you, Jason Brown has been talking about this, right. talking about Google becoming much more active at pulling reviews down and much kind of transforming more into a Yelp model on the review side as opposed to to what's what's much more kind of Wild West, and that's been over the last month, I think. Yeah, and you know, not to get philosophical here, but to get philosophical, I think that the. <laughs> um, I think there's going to be a question of where that line of moderation, what the accountability is. Is there is there going to be how is it going to be how is section two thirty going to be interpreted? Are there going to be changes That's to section two thirty? Yeah, because you know it's all it's a if people you know we're we live this stuff and so uh, how much credence do you put into online reviews, Conrad? Well. <laughs> I would say I think as you a consumer, and I are, as a consumer, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's where I'm going with this. Yeah. I think you and I are probably at the tip of the iceberg. I need a better analogy here, in in terms of our level of cynicism. I can tell you this: the terrible CRM system we currently use for the agency, they look amazing with their reviews online, hundreds and hundreds of. And and I can tell you this is. If, if, if this CRM system were a car, it wouldn't have a driving, uh, it wouldn't have wheels or a transmission. It is so bad. No one would ever possibly have used this thing and left it a three-star review. And so the reviews are increasingly questionable. And, you know, I've been saying this for a while. It'd be fascinating when Google, I mean, Amazon does a really good job of saying there's a verified buyer. They actually bought the pencil, the book, the whatever, you know, the, the skateboard a lot harder for uh, Google to actually get to that level. So what's a lawyer to do, Conrad? What's a lawyer to do? Well, I think that I know this guy who once told me you can't SEO your way out of being a bad lawyer. Right. Uh, well, how about, you know, let's also, you know, what also I thought you were going to go with this whole McCloskey thing is uh, what about this notion of any publicity is good publicity, right? So do your gun owner friends, are they more inclined to be like, yeah, McCloskey's well, Okay, so this is this we can go down this path. So, and we can use guns or we can use masks or any of these are metaphors for the same thing. I happen to be in Seattle. I've been in here since 2001. I am so pinky snowflake left leaning liberal. Um this episode it, brought to you by the autonomous zone. <laughs> well, it's gone. The chop zone is gone. Yeah, anyway. But you need to think about who you appeal to. I use so we can talk about guns in a, in a, in a in a less kind of threatening light. I use Julie Tollick as an example all the time of of a lawyer who personally doesn't appeal to me because she is big on the second amendment and and guns scare the crap out of me, right? It's not it's not a thing I'm into. So from a pure do I relate to Julie as someone, you know, if I was just looking at her from the outside, does does that relate to me? No. But does it really help position her for people who that is an important thing, right? Who really believe in that? And the answer to that is 100% yes. So the question, and I'm going to use it, we're gonna, we'll move from guns to masks here, although we can use the McCloskeys as an example. Does this actually hinder or help their cause? And we can get into the link building side of this as well. Um, but yeah, did you do any backlink analysis on I this? I have I'm, not. That's what I we have should have done. Not. So I'm going to do that while we're talking because <laughs> that would be a, a really, really fascinating thing to look at. So, Guy, while I run this, I'm going to literally run this in real time. Can you talk about backlinks and all publicity is good publicity? Yeah. So, um, essentially, for our uh, listeners who know the SEO game. Uh, links to your website are like votes for your website, but not all links to your website are created equally. So uh, my view uh, for a local business, uh, hyper relevant local links, like, you know, so uh, think uh, local city newspaper, schools, uh, maybe if you're a PI lawyer, you're thinking rehabilitation centers because it's, you know, you're, you're also a tangential a service provider for people that have been injured, those kind of businesses, links from those places for a lo from a local perspective, really, really powerful in helping your pages appear in search engine results. Uh, that's not to say that a link from, say, CNN or a link from, you know, some major news site, those are valuable as well. I think it's just a slightly different thing. So th what, we're, what we're driving at here is, did this PR, even though, so if you didn't identify with it and you're like, these people are... Uh, 
shouldn't be doing this and are not whatever your opinion is. You're on so nice the way you talk. <laughs> uh, thanks, I guess. <laughs> um, uh, in any event, what kind of online PR did this generate in the context of links? Because, you know, and we've seen this, we, you and I could probably, this is probably a whole episode we could talk about, but okay. lawyers who have done massive link building campaigns that to the public or to the uninitiated look like, well, why would they do that? And then you go look and it's like, oh, look what that did to their link profile. And then, you know, and this is the thing, like the best SEO is invisible, right? So you talk to these folks that have done these SEO link building, link bait type of things and, um, you know, it generates news. I mean, you can tell your story of Avo. Yeah. Um, in any event, so that's the, that's what we're, that's what we're wondering is, did this event, this incident, generate backlinks? Conrad, this was, what's the result? If you were a very, very cynical person, you could say they did this on purpose for pure SEO benefit, right? So I'm looking at this. It, their, their backlink profile just absolutely exploded. So uh, prior to the incident, they had a paltry, and this is, by the way, this is not the right this is much more complex than what I'm going to display this as, but just work with me on this. They had a paltry 20 different domains that pointed back to their site, which pretty much gets you nowhere. Within a week, they have added 6x to that. And so if, and, and by the way, they're not my client. I They're probably not your client if uh, you didn't know who they were. So we'll, we'll disavow any, any knowledge of this or any planning, although it's some of the... I, even I would not go so creative as to push this as a tactic because I, you know, the world, don't let the SEO uh, tail wag the dog. But from a pure link building perspective, this was a genius move. And if I'm the McCloskeys or their SEO agency or advertising agency, the thing that I would do at this point in time, I would be working really hard to keep, and again, do not let the SEO tail wag the dog. Very important but I would be working very, very hard to keep this story in the news. And I would have something on my website, a video, uh, we call this anchor content, something that exists nowhere else that say the local press is going to link to. So I'm just, I'm just going to free associate here. If I am the McCloskeys, this is, this is what I do. This is what I pull. And I'm assuming that these are really good people. So let's just make that assumption. Maybe I'm not right about that, but let's just say they are. I go out of my way to embrace someone from the local Black Lives Matter movement. I sit down with them on video and we have a conversation about what transpired. And I put that on my website. I don't throw that on YouTube. I put that on my website. And that may be a very hard conversation to have. It may be raw, blah, blah, blah. We prep for it. We make sure we don't come across as crazy white supremacists, et cetera, et cetera. So don't but bring the guns. Don't bring the guns to this talk. But you have a piece of content that is very raw, very real, very relevant, and very newsworthy, and frankly, very link worthy for people to link back to your site. And I would stoke that like Matt. Again, you cannot let SEO guide everything that you're doing, but that's the kind of thing that a really, really good SEO agency would be thinking about. And with that, let's take a break. As the largest legal-only call center in the U.S., Alert Communications helps law firms and legal marketing agencies with new client intake. Alert captures and responds to all leads 24-7, 365 as an extension of your firm in both English and Spanish. Alert uses proven intake methods, customizing responses as needed, which earns the trust of clients and improves client retention. To find out how Alert can help your law office, call 866-827-5568 or visit alertcommunications.com forward slash LTN. And we are back from the break and Conrad is teaching us how to stoke people's link building uh, fires by sitting down with guns. Well, I mean, if I had a job... If I didn't run an agency, if I actually had a job, the creativity required to be really successful in link building and the PR and the outreach around that, that is, that is really fun. It's unusual. It's out of the box. It's responsive. You need a great spokesman, right? Um, you need to be, you need to be uh, if, you're, if you're a law firm, you have to be 
really quick on your feet. Like it's a good trial lawyer type of skill. Super, super fun. Yeah, it's a and and it works. Now, this will be the other interesting thing. And again, maybe we do a follow up at some point. Did any of those links do anything? Yeah. Well, the, so the beauty would be if we had access to McCloskey's GA account to yeah, see or, where or Search or Council because I, you know, my, the other thing, the other piece of this, which you know, now we're going to get really nerdy, is I am of the you know, I I think back to Eric Schmidt's famous words that brand sorts out the cesspool. And if you really go deep on that, the fact that people are searching on their name, searching on their name plus permutations of lawyer or whatever it is, that's brand signaling to Google. And I bet you, and this is another argument for keeping that story in the news, is that those searches are actually helping the McCloskey's visibility, both in local and in traditional results. So that, that's my hunch. We see this with... TV advertisers that exactly when people are searching on your name and your firm names, you know, that call it a popularity signal. And I, and I, I know that there are people that will hear that and be like, this can't be right. This isn't how it works. And uh, I'm in the can I'm persuaded. I'm converted. I think that those brand signals with the click through rates, that the, the signals that Google can extrapolate from those kind of searches, they play a role. They absolutely play a role. And I mean, I mean, so let's let's go back to the theory of why this happens, right? If you are looking for a pair of sneakers, right, and Google knows that, and, and they they know this because they've got more data than than you can imagine. Um, they know that lots of people when they're they're talking about sneakers are looking for Nikes and and researching Nikes and reading about Nikes. That they're like, all right, well, Nikes must be good sneaker, and so so it. I mean, it thematically makes sense in terms of the way they think about these things. So I mean, a very fascinating concept to think about. Does the perspective, does the bias, does the negativity or positivity around? I mean, it could be Nike sucks, right? Um, and and how does that implicate from an SEO perspective? The other thing, Guy, just because you mentioned this, and I would uh, so those of you who are listening who happen to be heavy TV offline. Uh, radio, uh, billboard type advertisers, you should absolutely, if you're running Google ads, A-B test whether or not including your brand or not within the headline or within the copy of the ad has an impact. Because I, I, the answer is it has an impact. What that impact is, it depends on, frankly, how aggressively you are uh, on your advertising. But when people recognize a thing, even if they've never worked with you before, but they've recognized for the people, Morgan and Morgan, Morgan and Morgan, drip, 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 they are more likely to click on that. And when they're more likely to click on, especially when they see that, we be, and they're more likely to click on it because that that brand is contained within the ad. When you do that on the advertising side, sorry, we're going down a tangent here, but you, you mentioned brand. I think it's important. When they click more frequently because of the brand, your quality score goes up, your economics improve, and it is a great unfair advantage for those of you who do run offline branded campaigns because it drives the economics of PPC in your favor. Interesting stuff there. Yeah. So let's let's move to a completely, let's move away from masks and guns and controversy. And let's talk about the policy change that Google is rolling out on the 15th of this month. This is a Google Ads policy change that when I read it, really looked to have legal directly, directly implicated. And what they really talk about is, it's called the clickbait change or clickbait policy. And what they're really talking about is, are you inducing people to click on an ad because of an imminent fear or stoking fears around medical issues, violence issues, going to jail issues. And it's really written like it has the legal industry really directly in its sights. Have, have you have you filled any questions on this, Guy? Yeah. And, you know, this is one of the, I think we should actually read the, because it actually does uh, speak specifically to yeah. law. Yeah, so, so, so you pull, it up you pull that up while I while I talk through this. Mm -hmm. So I've connected with Google through our Google Premier Partnership Program uh, around this, and and my, my contact there, and, and we talked about it like specifically. Hey, it feels like you're targeting every single one of my clients here, 
And she said, you know, it's it's really more around being uh, deceptive and and making sure that people are are not being kind of coerced into clicking. Having said that, as Guy mentioned before, Google does things algorithmically, right? And when you're dealing with people going to jail, personal injury, divorce, right, threat of harm, like you're you're automatically dealing with things that have a distinct emotive reaction. And so it may be it I think it's possible that on the 15th as the Google algorithms kind of settle out, we may see a bunch of carnage in the PPC world with ads being disapproved. I I don't think that is impossible, although that at least from the the people at Google that I've talked to is certainly not their intent. So here's here's part of the policy. It's the uh, just for folks that want to follow up on this is the updates to the uh, misrepresentation policy, July 2020. So part of it is the following is not allowed: ads that use negative life events such as death, accidents, illness, arrests, or bankruptcy to induce <laughs> fear, guilt, or other strong negative emotions to pressure the viewer to take immediate action. So. Again, we won't know until, because there's another aspect of this I want to talk about, which is actually the enforcement aspect. But from a technical policy violation in terms of how you interpret this, most people, most lawyers are helping people with negative life events. So then the question is, is does the ad induce fear, guilt, or other strong negative emotions? So let's just work through some examples. So car accident. I would argue that Mm -hmm. there's fear in all of these situations. Right. And but but does the emotions. ad induce fear? That's the question. Okay. Does the ad induce the fear? So, so here's like a couple call of, me or go to jail, right? That yeah, would probably be let, a bit far. Yeah, let's see, let's see, let's try to walk through a couple <laughs> examples and I'll get I want to get your opinion on each of these. So first one is car accident. And then the ad is, you know, uh, don't lose your rights. Call us now. That sounds like negative life event plus inducement fear. of fear, right? Right. Okay. Or, or, or the insurance industry is going to take advantage of you. Right. Here's one. Call us to talk about bankruptcy or your kids won't be able to eat. Fear. No, right. that one's guilt. That was because you're trying to use the guilt one, but uh, fear also, sure. You should be fearful and guilty. So so that, so that I think that there's plenty of examples that we could go through where you know we see ads right now of lawyers that are doing this. They're using fear and negative life events in their advertising. Um, now, Let's flip it on its head. Car accident. Sleep better at night knowing that we're handling your case. Negative life event, but we're no fear, right? Re- uh, relieving fear. So I, as you kind of go through these examples, Guy, it feels to me, I mean, we, we know that fear sex like there there are things that sell constantly what? There are, i i know i'm not talking we're not going to go into sex here you but brought you brought it up i know but th- like there are things that trigger effectiveness of advertising period whether you like that or not just accept that they're that called the emotions case. and fear is one of the strongest emotions to work on it feels to me gee as i read this and you and as you kind of throw out those theoretical examples the most effective advertising here is going to be those ads that push as close to that policy violation as they possibly can without getting flagged. So then this becomes the question now. So, and we, this is the other thing that we dealt with this with, because Google has other policies about advertising and health related information and that kind of stuff. And I'd be curious to hear your experience. I know we've talked about this before, but my experience has been until more recently, maybe historically over the last 10 years or since the policy has been that way, there's been very little enforcement. In fact, the only time that it gets enforced is when a competitor goes and tries to report you. Right. The same way like the legal ethics stuff goes, right? So it's like consumers aren't actually complaining. It's your competition's reporting you to Google. And then what's the enforcement mechanism there? Well, here's the other one on here that uh, that I don't know how they enforce. One, One of the questions and part of this policy is you can't use pictures of real accidents. Mm-hmm. How that? How how do you know if it's a real accident? Yeah, I, I mean uh, that seems unenforceable. Yeah, and I I'm also like you know as we said it from the, when we're talking about reviews, like you know Google wants to solve these issues with you know AI, and it's like, huh? 
Uh, so, so we'll see, you know, TBD, we'll have to check back in on this after we start seeing whether or not ads are getting flagged and accounts getting suspended. But I, I think it's a, you know, for the, for the lawyers that are out there that are, uh, spending money on Google ads, I would talk to your agency or if you're doing it yourself or your in-house team, have a conversation about being prepared with creative that doesn't stoke fears, guilt, or negative emotions. So you're going to have to have some some creative sets prepared that are doing the opposite, relieving fear, making you know less stress. We're here to help you sleep better at night. I mean, and you can set this up now. You can set this up preemptively as an A-B. Right. Right. So you, so in an abundance of caution, your agency should be coming to you with like, Hey, this is coming out in order to make sure that you're not negatively impacted by this. We are, let's say you're, you have a very simplistic agency. They're just running a single ad for an ad group, blah, blah, blah. That is, that may or may not trip these filters. Like he and I have just told you, we have no idea if they can enforce this. Right. In an abundance of caution, you have a B ad that is very, very touchy feely, happy, lack of fear, love. reassuring, love, kittens. I don't know. Um, kittens. <laughs> kittens. <laughs> that doesn't work, by the way. That's niche. Uh, <laughs> kitten lawyers. We're the no, kitten but lawyers. Y- y- you can have this set up. So if your A ad gets struck, your B runs and you're, you're not kind of left flapping in the wind. Yeah, well, it'll be interesting too. And maybe you know, because of your super special relationship with Super Google, special. Uh, you no one else out. has it. Are they going to flag, are they going to disapprove ads or are they going to suspend accounts? Oh, I don't know. Because with the, question. so so I saw with the other policy violations where it was like, and it's a little bit different, right? So if you've got health information on your site and you're doing ads and, and they get flagged, those accounts were getting suspended but I think the, the the response there from Google is going to be something like, well, you can't really parse it out from the ad itself, but the same reasoning can apply to a landing page, right? So if you're driving somebody to a, it's not just the ad, it could be the landing page. No, but this is click, this is specifically called clickbait policy. It is. Right? And it says specifically ads. Um, we'll see. Yeah. So here's the thing, Guy. I'm going to add that question. So I'm doing a webinar with uh, Sherry from Google next week. Um, and I'll add that to the question. Because is it is that at, at the ad level or is it at the campaign level? I My gut tells me this is at the ad we level. We should have Sherry come on Lunch Hour Legal Marketing. We should. I will, a- I will ask her. I will invite her to join us and we can talk about this. Let her listen really, to this episode first and then she can decide if she wants yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. She's like, I don't want to talk about guns. <laughs> I don't want to talk about I don't want to talk to you jerks. White supremacist lawyers. So... Uh, we'll see. We'll see how this, this happens. I think one or two things is going to happen. Either this is going to be a big yawn and this is going to be a waste of the last 10 minutes of your life for having listened to me and Guy talk about it. Or there could be a really, really big shakeup that, that, that comes out next week. Or yeah. by the time you're listening to this, you'll be like, hey, what's going on? A couple other things, Guy, in the Google world that have come out. I've We've seen a lot of testing of new interface and ads showing up specifically around legal and specifically around local. The knowledge panel ads. So the knowledge panel ads came out in 2017. Can you kind of talk about what those knowledge panel ads a little bit? Yeah, it's ads showing up. And what's the knowledge panel, first of all? Yeah. So the knowledge panel shows up on the right side, specifically if you were to do like a branded search for Coca-Cola or Bill Smith Law Firm. um, The knowledge panel shows up on the right side. It has all sorts of information about your firm is driven by your Google My Business profile. Right. Um, in fact, you, if you just go do a search on your name, assuming you have, well, not necessarily even, but usually if, you, if you've if you claimed your Google My Business profile, you'll get a nice, rich knowledge panel with your images, reviews, address, hours, phone. And if you don't, uh, and you have answers. an agency, you should get a new agency, but that's a different conversation. Yes, that is. Um, <laughs> and so, the, so, so there are ads starting to show up here in this area. And the key here that happened in 2017 is you could put an ad on someone else's knowledge panel. Right. So I could, for example, put a Mockingbird ad on Guy's Attorney Sync knowledge panel that says... For cheaper, better, smarter. Better, cheaper. We outsource everything to Uzbekistan so you don't have to pay as much. <laughs> 
We is don't that where the, is that where the good work's coming out of? Uzbekistan. All the good work is Uzbekistan. No, but like so. So that's the kind of thing now. Now lawyers get super. Um, you you guys get mad about people bidding on your names, right? Think about those ads showing up in the knowledge panel, right? So whether or not this rolls out wide is 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 a very different question. The other one, Guy, that I've seen. I don't know if you've seen this. Also, have you seen the people also search for? I haven't seen it in the legal, but I've seen it elsewhere. Yeah, I haven't seen it in legal yet. But you've, we've seen it outside of that, right? So like if yeah. you're looking for Domino's pizza, you might also get whatever, the Pagliacci's or, or whatever it might be. Pagliacci's? You got to come to Seattle late Pagliacci's. It's <laughs> only, good, only good pizza on the, East, on the West Coast. Hmm. So that's like the people also, it's basically, and this is, you know, you were talking about brand earlier. The people also search for can really, it essentially says, I know all these different businesses are law firms, and these are the brands that are well known, right? And that becomes a really, really fascinating way to look at things. And then the final thing is on that: if you click through on those local results, we've seen a couple, and this was specifically a legal example um, where there's a carousel at the bottom of that page of the big map at the bottom of that page with a rotating list of law firms. So it's giving, you know, local became really a fight over the three pack. And now they've kind of gone the complete opposite end. And, and, and by the way, this hasn't rolled out everywhere and it may not roll out at all, but, but the example I saw, it had something like 20 or 30 different law firms rotating at the bottom of the screen. And as you rolled over it, the Google My Business knowledge panel style information came out. So that was, there's a lot of, a lot of stuff that, that we saw as kind of tests, but I don't know that anything is going to roll out. It looks like they're trying to come up with another way to frankly monetize a bit more. No, I get it. Yeah. That knowledge panel, that carousel had ads showing up in it. Morgan and Morgan all over the place. Yeah. And I, I think the, one of the lessons here, I think too, is, is number one is don't go chasing tests, right? So like, every, you know, we talk about this cutting edge stuff. We stay on top of it. We think it's interesting. Some of it might turn into an opportunity. I do think this is a, a good reason to use something like, we like uh, Maz's stat tool because it tracks rich results. And so you can, if your target queries, if your universe of searches that are rel- locally relevant and practice area relevant to you are showing some of these features, you should be all over it. But if they don't, right, if you're not seeing them, then this is more of like, hey, keep them in the back of your mind, you know, start thinking about them. Maybe if you have a special relationship with Google, like Conrad does, <laughs> you call up your Google person and ask about these things. But um, for the most part, this is not a, uh, I think I think sometimes people hear these shiny new things and then they go and like, oh, we got to go do this. And it's like, uh, if it's not showing up for your relevant queries, it's not really worth your time. 100%. It's fun to talk and about. So let's let's wrap this with what Guy's really talking about here. Know the math. Know what's driving things for you. Have insight, access, ownership of the math because things may change, things may not change. The Google Ads policy may completely blow your advertising campaign up. It may help it. It may hurt it. We don't know. You need to have ownership, access of things like how much am I spending? How many your, people are your account. contacting me? Your account. I love this argument that, oh, no, this is our proprietary account. Key, can you come up with three, two, or one reasons for a law firm to be like, hey, I don't want to have access to my data. I'll give you a dollar. I'll send you a Pagliacci's pizza. Um, oh, I could, that's going to be a hard one. Okay. I don't have access to my, well, that's a good reason for not having access to the accounts through which I'm spending my own money. I mean, you know, look at, at some, at some level, it's like, if, if you're getting some kind of deal out of it, I guess. Right. So like if a lead generator is like, we're going to front the ad cost, but it's going to be on our ad accounts and you're just paying for leads. Maybe that's an argument. Okay. <laughs> I'm stretching. Fair stretch. I'm it, trying. Yeah. Here's the answer. It's your money. It's your account, it's your campaign, it's your law firm. Own it. And with that, we're going to wrap. We'll, we'll, we'll connect with you next month, but we're going to call this a wrap. Thank you, as always, listeners, for tuning in to this episode of Lunch Hour Legal Marketing. If you're not currently a subscriber, please do go subscribe to Apple Podcasts or Google Play or all these other various 
podcast tools. And as always, we encourage you and invite you to leave a review, positive or negative, as long as it's real. And uh, if you're interested in participating, whether you have topic suggestions or you'd like to be a guest, please don't hesitate to contact us. We love hearing from you. Until next time from Lunch Hour Legal Marketing. Thank you for listening to Lunch Hour Legal Marketing. If you'd like more information about what you heard today, please visit LegalTalkNetwork.com. Subscribe via Apple Podcasts and RSS. Follow Legal Talk Network on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. And or download the free app from Legal Talk Network in Google Play and iTunes. The views expressed by the participants of this program are their own and do not represent the views of, nor are they endorsed by Legal Talk Network, its officers, directors, employees, agents, representatives, shareholders, or subsidiaries. None of the content should be considered legal advice. As always, consult a lawyer. Well, see, that's what that's what I miss, Kelly. Because Kelly was down for singing. Yeah, I, that's I I I don't drink enough ever in my life to sing. All right, let's get serious here. I I will practice in the shower. <laughs> let's let's not put that in the episode. All right. <laughs>